This week in IT, I'm going to look at the new MacBook Air that Apple announced at its Worldwide Developers Conference and whether the new M2 chip is a major breakthrough or just a point iteration. Russell here, Editorial Director of Petri.com in this life and IT consultant in a previous one. So, of course, the most significant change in the 2022 model of the MacBook Air is the new M2 chip. But I'm going to talk a bit more about that in detail in a moment. But first, let's have a look at the other major changes to this new version of the MacBook Air. So Apple claims that the new M2 chip is 20% faster than its predecessor and it's still a fanless design. This model comes with two new colours, Starlight and Midnight, and to be honest, the Midnight is absolutely gorgeous. There have been major changes to the chassis. It's 20% smaller, it's just 11.3 millimetres thick, and of course it weighs less than the previous generation. It comes now with the much-loved MagSafe charging port, and there's now a 136 liquid retina display with thinner bezels and the brightness has been increased from 400 on the previous generation to 500 nits on this new model. And another noteworthy change is now we have a 1080p FaceTime camera and Apple says that this has twice the resolution and low light performance of the previous MacBook Air. So those are the basic changes. Of course, the other configuration options are pretty much the same as last year's model. So you get eight gigabytes of RAM as standard, 256 gigabytes of storage on the base model as well. And you can opt between an eight core or a 10 core CPU. So let me know down in the comments below what you think about these new specs. So the first thing that strikes me is, well, I really like the new design, especially that new color option of Midnight. It looks great to me. But because it's 20% less volume and much thinner and lighter than last year's MacBook Air, it does leave me to wonder how this new M2 chip is really going to cope in this new chassis because the less space you have inside, the less potential there is for natural cooling. So is this going to start throttling when you really run it at absolute maximum capacity or is it going to cope? Now, of course, the MacBook Air isn't really designed for really hefty workloads. That's what the MacBook Pro is for. But nevertheless, people are going to be running this and trying to get as much out of it as possible. But the big news here, of course, is the M2 chip. And this is the announcement that everybody was really waiting for. Now, of course, Apple really hyped it up last year this breakthrough new technology, this system on a chip design with an ARM chip is much more efficient than anything that Intel has been able to do. There were some teething problems with the new MacBooks announced last year. You know, they weren't perfect. A few little glitches and things with them. So this second generation, of course, Apple would have learned from any of those little things that weren't quite perfect and hopefully we'll see those improved with the M2 chip. But how much better is it than the M1? Let's have a look in more detail at what Apple is actually saying about it. So this is Apple's website and I'm just going to scroll through the relevant sections that are connected to the chip itself. Now, of course, they're saying that this is a much better chip than the M1, much improved. It's ideal for doing in, you know, whether it's office tasks, uh, you know, Word, Excel, or whether you're editing video, and you can get up to 18 hours of battery life. Another big advantage of the ARM chips because they're specifically designed for mobile devices. It's 1.4 times faster than the M1 model and 15 times faster than the Intel based model. Now that may seem that well, all Intel chips then are really bad, but the last MacBook Air that they're comparing this to with an Intel chip was an i5 dual core. Now, of course, that's a bit of a joke to compare it with this. There are much more capable mobile Intel chips. So Apple is providing this comparison between different kinds of workloads between the M1 and the M2 chip on its website. So the first one up is video editing, and they're saying that, well, it's 1.4 times faster with video editing. Then if we come to image filters, 1.2 times faster, gaming, 1.3, scene edit detection, 1.6, photo stitching again, 1.4. Uh, ProRes video transcode, that's three times faster. Now, I believe that this is not necessarily because the chip is faster, but they've just built logic 
into the chip that makes it more efficient to transcode ProRes. If you're not sure what ProRes is, then this is basically a specialized video format that's actually unique to Apple devices that is suitable for high quality footage and also suitable for editing. So it's not like the highly compressed files that come out of most consumer level cameras that are very difficult to edit in software like Final Cut Pro. Where you're really seeing the improvements here are in the GPU rather than the CPU. So depending on what you're going to do with the new MacBook Air will really determine the outcome of the performance increase. You know, so if you're just doing stuff with Office and browsing the web, you're not really likely to see much of an improvement with this device. But if you're heavily into content creation, then of course, you know, it probably makes sense to buy this instead of the original M1. But of course, Apple wants you to upgrade if you're still running on one of those old Intel MacBooks. So they're just giving you this comparison. Of course, you've got 15 times faster with video editing here. Uh, five times faster with image filters and effects. Let's go to the ProRes transcode here and of course 24 times faster. That shouldn't come as a surprise of course. So that brings me nicely on to who is this for? The reason I'm talking about the MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro today is because this is a device that is really for you know general purpose computing much like the Surface Laptop Go 2 that we talked about last week. If you're doing kind of standard office work with Word, Excel, Google Docs, you know, using apps in a web browser, some general surfing, maybe some basic stuff with media, you know, watching movies, playing some lightweight games, or some lightweight content creation, then this is an ideal device for you. But if you're a serious professional content creator, then the chances are this isn't going to give you quite enough grunt to do the things that you need to do. And that's where the MacBook Pro range comes in, of course. There are some arguments that if you spec this out to the maximum configuration, then basically why not just buy the base model of a MacBook Pro? Well, of course, the MacBook Pro is bigger, bulkier, heavier. You know, so it depends what you want as well. This is a much more portable device. So is the MacBook Air really the best device for content creators? Now what I noticed after the release of the original M1 MacBook Air last year is there are a lot of people on YouTube demonstrating how it was, you know, able to edit video without a sweat so it could take that highly compressed video from consumer level cameras and you could scrub through that footage, you know, very smoothly without the process of throttling and without it breaking a sweat at all. And that's absolutely fine, it's very impressive in itself. Itself. But what you need to remember is that video editing isn't just scrubbing through material and chopping it up. If you're a serious video editor, you're going to probably want to do things like color grading, motion graphics, you know, applying resource heavy effects to your footage. And that's probably going to be a task that maybe the MacBook Air struggles with a little bit. So it depends what you mean exactly by video editing. So yeah, sure, if it's just pure video editing, then maybe this is fine. But if you're doing something a little bit more creative with your videos, then I would suggest having a look at the MacBook Pro line instead. So is the baseline model of the 2022 MacBook Air worth the extra $200 over the M1, which is still on sale today? You can still buy it, by the way. Well, if you're a content creator and you don't need, you know, a lot of heavy lifting, then Yes, I think it is this, this little extra boost of power that you're getting from the GPU in these devices is really going to help you probably in your day to day tasks. If you have the original M1 or you just want to get a device that's a bit cheaper and you don't have any special performance requirements, you just need, you know, great performance and great battery life, then, you know, probably just, you know, have a look at the original M1 MacBook Airs. So please let me know what you think about the new M2 chip and the new MacBooks in the comments below. If you found this useful, then please give it a like because it really does help us to get this video seen by more people on YouTube. And if you'd like to see this kind of news every week, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's it from me, but I'm going to leave you with a couple of other videos that you might like to check out.